Hello, in today's video we're going to explore Windows 365 Frontline Shared Mode. So in previous videos we've done a quick comparison against what the different licensing schemes are um, but now that Windows 365 Frontline Shared Mode has been released to GA we can learn a bit more about it and what the advantages are and how it compares to the other SKUs in a bit more detail. I'm trying to think in my head how I can explain what the differences are between the different SKUs. So I'm just going to flick over to my other screen and we have this different view here, right? So what I'm basically going to do today in today's video, I'm going to walk over how to set it up, right? We're going to connect to it. But first of all, we're basically going to go through what is the difference between Windows 365 Frontline Shared Mode and the dedicated mode and Frontline mode, right? So I think this explains it quite well hopefully so first of all cloud pc uses so in dedicated mode i get one cloud pc per user in frontline standard mode i get one cloud pc shared by up to three users whereas in frontline shared mode is one cloud pc shared by many users one at a time right so whereas within frontline licenses we're limited to one cloud pc shared by up to three users frontline shared mode is one pc shared by many users one at a time right but only one of those users can log at any one time the other major difference is windows 365 frontline shared mode is now a non-persistent workload right so it's meant for those users who are coming in and doing timesheets doing anything which doesn't require any kind of profile personalization that's the other major difference there as well and as we've already mentioned only one user at a time can use a windows 365 frontline shared shared device pulled resettable sessions right whereas dedicated and frontline it's a full windows experience like the user gets their own desktop essentially so they can personalize their own desktop whereas the frontline shared mode is a non-persistent workload right so nothing saved so essentially the session resets itself and the next time that the user logs in so what is its use case it's been designed for temporary access going in and out hot desking, training, kiosk mode, that type of thing. So it's not meant for a persistent workload. So if you've got an office worker who's coming in and doing the same task every day or they require their fluffy car of their desktop wallpaper or something, this is not that workload. It's meant for those library workloads, right? Kiosk work modes, people who are coming in to do their timesheets, that kind of thing, right? And it's meant as a, a cheaper cost, right? So it's supposed to be the lowest licensing SKU that you can get. And as I mentioned, user data storage, there isn't any because it's deleted upon log off, okay? So, dedicated cloud PC, which is the normal Windows 365 SKU, it's like giving their own employee their laptop in the cloud, right? So it's their one-to-one -one mapping user to ratio. Windows 365 Frontline is like having three workers share one laptop. Right, so they get their own login, their own personalized workspace, yeah? But it's for shift-based teams, yeah? So nine employees equals three licenses, right? Think about those call centers, those hospitals, that kind of thing, okay? But frontline shared mode, as I mentioned, is a public slash shared computer scenario where everything resets after the use. So everyone's sharing their own desktop, nothing saved after they logged off, right? So again, ideal for temporary use, training rooms, like kiosks, where people don't need persistent desktops and when they only need temporary access to something. So if they just need something for an hour, maybe they're doing some training or something that they're not dedicated office workers. Okay, so I hope that's clear. I know that shows the difference between the free and different license SKUs because I know the more people, the more licenses get added on, people get a bit more confused. So now that we've done that, next thing we're gonna go and look and we're actually gonna see how this is actually set up and configured. Um, we'll provision a frontline shared desktop. Okay, I'll show you that provisioning process and then we'll log on and test that and see what that looks like. All right, back shortly. Okay, so now that we've got some licenses, now what we need to do is actually configure this within the Intune portal. All right, so let's head over there right now. So this is the, the Intune portal. So I'll show you where to go from the beginning. So you just go to intune.microsoft.com and then log in with your credentials. And then if we head over to devices and then we go over to windows 3 seed 5 and then basically what we need to do we need to create a provision policy right and within the provision policy that's where we define whether it's frontline shared mode or just frontline or just dedicated okay so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to go to provision policies okay and you can see i've already got some provision policies set up here and then i'm going to go to create policy okay now, I've just realized I don't have a security group set up. So 
Now let's go and do that now. So I'm just going to go over to my portal and then I'm going to go to my enter ID and then I'm going to go and create a new security group. All right. So if I go to manage, no, I want groups, not users. So enter ID groups, new group. And I'm going to call this frontline shared and uh, win 365 frontline shared. Okay. So this is a group for Windows 365 frontline shared users. Owners, no, so members, I'm just going to add myself in there. I'm going to go to the admin, so that's me. Here we go. So I'm going to add that into there, and then go select, and then click and create. So now we've got a group that we can put users into where they would access these frontline shared desktops. So you can do it by different departments as well. You know, have finance, marketing, that kind of thing. But I've just done a generic group just for sake of testing. Okay. So now if I go to my provisioning policy, so I'm going to go back here and I'm going to call it Windows 365 frontline shared. Now, this is where we select the license type, okay? So I'm gonna select frontline, and here is the new setting for shared, yeah? So dedicated is if you, if you want it to the standard frontline license where you have three users essentially sharing one license. The shared license is the new one, right? Where we are essentially sharing a license amongst multiple users, or multiple desktops, sorry. Okay, all right, so we can see here, a single license lets you provision one cloud PC that can be shared non-concurrently amongst a group of users, right? So for example, if I've got 10 people, I can add them into a group and any one of those 10 people can log on to that desktop or use consume that license at any one time, but not all at the same time, right? Only one at a time. That's the key difference here, okay? When the last user logs out, the machine will reprovisioned and then it will be clean again. Okay, so it's non persistent. Okay, so I'm gonna do the join type. So the join type is I'm gonna do Microsoft Enter ID join just for simplicity. So if you wanted to join it to Active Directory, you select this, but I'm gonna select Enter ID join. For the network, I'm gonna select Microsoft Hosted Network just again for simplicity. If you wanted to host this within your own Azure subscription or if you wanted access to internal resources, that's where you'd select that. But I'm just gonna select Microsoft Hosted Network, okay? Geography, so this is where you select your region which you want it to be available in, right? I'm gonna select United Kingdom, you can tell by my accent, that's where I'm from. And then I'm gonna select region as UK South. So you can see that's the only region I can select. So for example, if I then go to European Union, well, the only region I can select is like North Europe. So it is quite limited at the moment in which regions it's available in. I'm sure that'll change in the future. So I'm just gonna select United Kingdom, UK South, and then we can have the option here to the max off that to single sign up. Okay, so I'm gonna select, yeah. Why would you not do that if it's available? Because it just makes the user log on experience a lot better. Okay. Okay, so we're gonna select next. We can use the gallery image now. If you needed like applications and stuff installing onto the host, then it may be worth creating a custom image. So again, for the sake of testing and simplicity, I'm just gonna use the gallery image. Maybe later on, we'll do another video where we'll show you how to select a custom image. You've got a couple of different approaches to this. I saw a Microsoft article, basically some customers are using autopilot to basically provision these desktops. So when the desktops are provisioned, applications are already being pushed out. You can also use something like Intune to install the applications onto the image, but be wary of the time delay that it may take to install those applications when the VMs are provisioned. Personally, if you're constantly using a non-persistent environment and you want to have applications available as soon as the desktop is created, you really should be going down the image management route, right? So a uh, couple of different options there. Maybe that's a, another video on its own entirely. But yeah, for now, we'll just do the gallery image, which we're gonna select that. So I'm just gonna go here and select gallery image, which is the standard Windows 24 H2. I'm gonna select next. Configuration language. So this is the language important machine. We're just gonna use United Kingdom. And here you can also select your custom naming convention as well, right? So if you've got a certain naming convention that your company applies to, we can select that here as well. But again, here, we're just gonna leave this at the standard CPC. Okay, a value must not be empty. Okay, and we'll do that. Okay, that's that. 
Skip tags, I don't need to do that here, so I'm just gonna click next, assignments. So this is where we leverage that group that we just created, right? So assigned Cloud PCs by a group. So that's why I went in and pre-created that group. Um, so users in the selected group have access to connect to a shared Cloud PC created using the provision policy, okay? So provision appropriate number of Cloud PCs based on the number of available licenses, right? So we need to make sure that we have enough Cloud PCs enabled for the number of users that we've got, okay? All right, so I'm just gonna go into here and I'm gonna choose my Windows 365 Frontline Shared Group. So this is a group that we just created earlier, okay? So I'm gonna select Next, Cloud PC Size, okay? So this is just two CPU, eight gigs of RAM assignment preview so choose the number of cloud pcs that should be provisioned and a friendly name for the assignment right provisioning the appropriate number of cloud pcs based on available licenses a number of users and the expected number of users connecting at any given time okay so for me it's going to be quite easy i just need one but if you had multiple users that wanted to connect in then you need to select the appropriate number of cloud pcs for here my assignment name I click over that so this is going to be choose a friendly name for the collection of cloud pcs so the name will appear for users in the windows app and reporting experiences within the intune portal okay the name will begin with letter or number and end with letter or number or underscore or making saying only in letters numbers and underscores pages hyphens okay so i'm going to call this youtube on the tests to test okay number of cloud pcs just for the sake of testing let's provision two okay okay so i'm just gonna select one okay all right so i'm gonna select next so that's gonna provision me a cloud pc in frontline shared mode okay i'm gonna select next next okay and i think we are good so just to reiterate what this is going to do it's going to create a cloud pc frontline shared mode right what the difference is there this cloud pc is going to be a non-persistent device so if i was doing this in dedicated mode i'd only have access this would be my cloud pc right no one else will be able to use this cloud pc apart from me right if i was doing this in frontline shared mode it means that we're provisioning the cloud pc but only f with one license up to three people can use it in different time periods right whereas what we're doing here is we are creating a non-persistent vm okay if i've got a group of users maybe 10 users any one of those 10 users will be able to log on to this device okay but only one at a time because i've only got one license right so for example if i had five people i would need to provision five cloud pcs but i can only see one license right so if i bought one license i could share that one license amongst five people and then that would mean at any time one person could log on right and use that cloud pc but that would be it if i wanted to buy enough licenses for all five people then i need to go buy five licenses so this is a non-persistent scenario so it saves you from having to buy a license for each individual user or it saves you from having to worry about the shift working scenario. It gives you a bit more flexibility. Okay, so we're gonna go click on create. So essentially what should now happen is because I've created the policy, I have a license available and it's also then gonna go and automatically provision that Cloud PC device. So give it a few minutes, we'll come back and I'll show you when that device has been provisioned. Okay, so just a quick update. You can see it's been a few minutes and we can see here our device is now provisioning, right? So we have our Windows 11. But this literally took a minute. You can see here the device is set provisioning. That was started at 2.18 p.m. So we'll give it a few minutes and then we'll come back and once it's finished creating, we'll connect to that device and see what the experience is like. All right, see you shortly. Okay, so as you can see here, we have now got our desktop's provisioned you can see that state sets provisioned so we just click into there and you can see the details so this is my frontline shared device okay so now let's actually go and have a quick look and see what that actually looks like so 
you're going to be a bit disappointed because the user experience is exactly the same as it would be if you were connecting to a normal desktop. Okay, so let's just launch up the Windows app. Windows app, go on to here. Now, what we can do here is just make sure I'm logged in with the right user. Yep, I am. So we can filter on certain types of workspaces in the Windows app. You see here now I've got Azure Virtual Desktop, Frontline Shared, all Windows 365. I'm going to select Frontline Shared. Here you can see the actual state is, is a Frontline Shared Desktop, just so the users know what that is. So then you can go to here and you can do a reset view details, for example, which just shows what time of license it is. All right, so let's go and connect to that desktop. So I'm going to connect to that. The logon experience is probably going to be slightly slower than you would do if you had a local profile. But you can see here, we've got everything in here. I've got all my office applications and stuff. And you can see that single sign on works as well, because I think it asked for credentials, right? It just logged me, uh, logged me straight on. So let's actually go and create a file and then just put it on the desktop and then see if it's still there after we've logged off. Let's call this is my test file. Okay. And I'm going to save that onto my desktop. Right, so I'm going to go to save as. So you can see here it's automatically connected by OneDrive as well, um, which is useful. So we're going to save this to documents. Okay, this is my test file. Okay, and then also going to save it onto the C drive as well, just to see what happens there. Yep, okay, that's going to be cool. There you go, save to this PC. Okay, so I'm going to close that down and then I'm going to go onto the C drive. Now obviously, hopefully you'll be having policies in place which blocks people going to the C drive, but testing one, two, three. Okay, all right, so we've now done that. So we're now going to log off, okay? So sign out. Okay, so we're now gonna sign back in again onto the desktop. Okay, here we are. Let's see if our folder still exists on the C drive. C drive. Yep, the folder's still there on, on the local drive, which is fine. So let's see if my document's still there. So you see my document's gone, right? So it's basically anything that sits within the user profile is reset, but anything which sits on the C drive, like I just created that folder, that would that will be persistent. So it's not the whole VM that's persisted. It's just it's just the user profile. Obviously now people can connect like OneDrive and stuff and connect to any shared resources that they need to if they need to persist that profile data. All right. Yeah, so that's pretty much the user experience. People just see it as a normal full desktop, right? But obviously the user profile it gets reset upon log off. We can see here mm -hmm. like the connection information same as you would do within like Azure version desktop or Windows 365. As you can see there, what we've done is we've created the provision policy. We connected to the cloud PC. So thoughts around this new feature? I think it is good. It has, I'd say fairly limited scenarios where you want to use that, but it's good now that you've got all these different options, right? You can use Azure version desktop if you want to be flexible. You can use the Windows 365 dedicated device if you want to have 40 hours a week connecting every day save the user's profile you can use the front windows 365 frontline and if you want to have persisted desktops and save settings and you have those shift type scenarios this final one shared mode just gives us the ability to basically for those non-persistent workloads those people who need to do their timesheets and you don't want to have to provision a full PC for them. I think it's a, a good kind of mixture of what you can do around the cost exercise. It's going to be quite interesting to see how people use this, right? A very really important thing that people need to do is persona mapping. I'd be interested to see how people manage that. We now have four different personas and possibly more. We can fit workloads onto Windows 365. We can fit workloads onto Azure Virtual Desktop. We can do frontline shared mode. We can do frontline. It just gives us a lot more choice. And therefore, hopefully, that can reduce down the cost as well. I hope you found today's video useful. If you did, please subscribe. It really helps me. And I will see you next week for another topic. All right. Thanks. Goodbye. <laughs>